We're going to pick up here with named ACLs in just a moment. What I wanted to show you was exactly how much stuff comes after the access list information in show IP interface. I know I truncated it when I had it on the board, but I went back to R1, ran show IP interface easier. Remember, if you want to see this information that we've got up on the screen, you have to put show IP interface, not just show interface E0. And as you can see, a lot of stuff comes after the access list information. A lot of stuff you may not need, but again, that info is just near the top, about seven lines down of show IP interface. Let's talk about those named ACLs for a moment, and then we'll go through the syntax of them, and then I'm gonna work one into our lab I mentioned that we're gonna do about placement and also about standard and extended ACLs. Again, named ACLs, they help us get around the numeric limitations. They allow us to give an ACL a much more intuitive name. The operation is the same. It's going to be from top to bottom. You can use host in any, all you want to. Uh, but the configuration is a little bit different. I'm going to show you that here on the live equipment in just a moment. Now, here in the first sample command we're going to go through, the first sample ACL, a router that should allow no traffic sourced from 175 54-56-0-24, should leave our given interface, which we'll use serial interface. I want to concentrate on the NACL configuration more than the application since we've done that a couple of times. But we don't want that to leave regardless of where it's going. You know, so we're really concentrating on the source, which means we could use a standard ACL if we wanted to. Uh, let's see. Now, let's go ahead and start the configuration of that. And you will see, let me bring the live equipment up. Mouse does not want to cooperate. There we go. Let me bring that up just a touch. And we're good to go. Let's hop over to router 3 and we'll take a look at this. And if you start writing the access list the same way we did before, we've done those several times. And I haven't shown you iOS help here that often. But there's nothing here about a name. So, you know, you could keep going and there's nothing named there what you need to do is go with IP access list. And you can see that the first thing we're asked is not deny, permit, or anything like that. We've got a couple of logging options, but more importantly, we have to define it as standard or extended right here. So that's how we're going to approach that. And let's go ahead, we'll just go ahead and put standard here. And you can see it's going to allow you to configure the original numeric ranges this way, but of course it would not be a named ACL. Let me just show you this. It's a bit of a quirk. Notice when I put extended, it's going to allow me to configure the original numeric range. That's not what we're going to use IP access list for. We're going to use it for our name. And uh, let's just call it uh, no net 56. I like to put underscores in my names because it's easier to read, but I know most people hate them. <laughs> so I'll go with that. And let's see, we've got an unrecognized command. Hmm. How so? Because we didn't put extended or standard in. See that? We've got to put that in there. If you just go straight with the name, it's not going to work. So let's go ahead and go with extended. I like to use those in, uh, instead of standard whenever I can. But since we are filtering on source IP, we could just use the standard. And that's actually it. So now you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, where do I start putting in all my network information? Well, you start putting it in here because you have to drop into what we call NACL configuration mode. It's just named access list configuration mode. With a named ACL, you don't just write one long line after another. You use the IP access list command, you indicate extended or standard, and then you give it a name. And now we're going to start using those options that are a little more familiar to us. And you can see it even mentions extended access list configuration commands. Because if you try if you try to get sneaky, you know, and come as a standard and say, oh, I'll be able to do destination stuff, you can't do it. So let's do a deny. And it's the same thing as before. And the source is always going to be the first thing you do. So our source is 174.56.56.0. And we're going to put any for our destination. And we've got that time range I told you about. Got a couple of log options there we're not going to use. And that's it. 
So now I want to permit everything else. And that's it. We're an extended, AC, an extended named ACL, so we have to put the word any twice. And that is it, believe it or not. Let's say I was going to apply it to Ethernet 0. Would I apply it in the same method? Yes, because notice you have the, uh, the option for word here, access list name. So let's see what we've got there. Also, don't be thrown by this. I've noticed in the iOS readout here, iOS help. IP access list, you know, you look at this range 1 through 199, you're like, wait a minute, you know, I thought it was just 1 through 99 and then 100 through 199. Notice it mentions standard or extended, standard or extended. But here, we use no net 56. And again, you still have to specify inbound or outbound packets. Still got to do that. And that's it. Same logic. Commands are a little bit different. You know, use IP access list. So you can drop down into named access configuration mode. I guarantee you one day you'll try to do it without that. Or you'll try just putting it all in one long line. Don't worry about it. Like I said, it's just a slightly different format. It takes a little getting used to with the NACL, NACL config mode. But after that, you know, really nothing to it. That's it for a named ACL. In the very next video, we're going to use an ACL to limit Telnet access because we talked about how important that is. And we use the one size fits all password and then we created a username database password. But maybe we would just want to block some addresses from accessing us via Telnet at all. Or you want to specify one address that can and then just use the implicit deny to deny everybody else. So we'll do that. And then after that video, we'll talk about the placement of the ACLs, where to put them in your network, and then a huge lab to go along with that. So I'll see you on the next video and we'll limit some Telnet access.